couple other things now yeah. we're going to do here. Uh, and some of them we've kind of already touched on, but what goes on in the bullpen over the course of the game? And we try and kind of sneak peek sometimes with binoculars. I know fans speak. Just generally, what, what's going on there, man? You, how much are you guys really paying attention to everything that's going on in the game and how much of it you've got to kind of occupy yourselves? It might get a little bit boring, at least right. early on. You know, I think there's that period of it all depends on the starter. You know, it really does. If the starter's cruising through the first few innings, um, you can kind of – relax and have some fun down there a little bit. Uh, it's tough to watch 162 games down there every single pitch. Um, but once the fifth inning gets you know around, regardless of how the starter's doing, everyone kind of locks in. And um, for me especially, I started looking at the lineup and looking at the pinch hitters, guys I could face, and maybe where the pinch hitters would come into. Um, you know, guys that throw later in the game will start doing their routine. And uh, maybe a guy like, you know, Dylan or something, he knows that, hey, if the starter gets in trouble this inning, I'm probably the guy in there. So he starts getting ready to go. Uh, but yeah, we, we try to keep it loose early on and then as the game gets going, everyone, um, you can start to see everyone kind of the face change a little bit and the concentration's there and everyone kind of wanders to their little space in the bullpen and starts stretching and getting ready to go. What city has the best hecklers? Because I'm sure you guys hear a lot when you have fans that are able to just lean right over. Yeah, sometimes it's just ridiculous. But <laughs> um, You know what, there's a couple, some people are just obnoxious mm -hmm. and they're not, even, they're not good hecklers, you're just like, what are you, what are you saying? <laughs> But, you know, I think you go to Boston, you go to New York, and, uh, you know, they razz you really pretty good. But they understand the game, too, and when you do well, they give you the respect. The respect. And I think you appreciate that as an opposing player. You know, yeah, you know, wear me out as much as you want, say whatever you want to me. But then uh, if you do well, they go, hey, nice job. Or the next day you're down the bullpen. They're like, hey, nice job. Hope you don't do it again. You know, stuff right. like that. Um, and I think yeah, it's a little bit easier to take when you're a player when you know that they'll give you that appreciation, too, at the end. Now that Tommy Hunter's gone, who's the most talkative oh, gosh. there during a game? Wow. Dom? No. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's a tough one. You know, there'll be moments where we don't say anything down there. But, you know, it's probably me. Sure. It's probably me. I, you know, when I get down there um, – just kind of like the talk. I hate sitting down there and it being just quiet. You know, we'll talk about anything, whether it's, you know, guys on the other team, scouting reports, what other guys are thinking, or we just kind of talk about how our, our day was, like, up until we got to the field. So I try to kind of get the conversation started, especially if there's just nothing going on down there. Uh, maybe Raz Dom a little bit, right. uh, you know, when the phone rings all the time and, and Buck's calling down there and talking to him. Uh, what about the most serious? Is there somebody you need to kind of loosen up once in a while? Um... No, you know, we don't really have anybody. I mean, I would say Brad at times, you know, at certain days. Uh, but um, TJ wore, used to wear him out pretty good. He'd be in those moods some days when he was really, really serious. And uh, TJ would kind of heckle him a little bit and loosen him up. But uh, I would say maybe at times Brad. But uh, for the most part, everyone's pretty good at keeping it loose down there. I think uh, the older we've gotten, the more we realize that um, you can't be so overly, you know, locked in all the time. you got to especially down the bullpen. Like I said, every pitch of every game, it's really tough to focus in. Um, but we know when we need to and when we don't. Is Darren the best at catching home run balls? Yeah, Is anybody else allowed to catch a home run ball? I think, um, I think Jet Ruiz, our bullpen catcher, tried to take one from him one time, and that didn't go over so well. So Darren's the designated home run catcher down there. But <laughs> someone's going to steal one from him one day. Um, but right now, he, he's the guy. Is he the leader of the group down there? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I'm still learning. This is my third year in the bullpen, so I, that's not a, really a lot of time in the bullpen. Uh, so we still lean on Darren a lot for things. Um, you know, talking about him in certain situations, or even there's situations I come into the game now where it's still a little bit unfamiliar. And, uh, you know, we'll talk to Darren, or he'll be the first guy up to some of the younger guys and help him through. Um, and that's a big piece, but it's not just the bullpen. Um, you know, he helps out with starters too. I know it's a different role, but we have a lot of guys that have starting experience in the bullpen, and so we can help each other through, especially some of the younger guys when they're struggling. I've been there. I've mm -hmm. uh, been there when I've done well as a starter when I've struggled. So, um, you know, pitching's pitching. It's about getting guys out. Obviously, as a starter, you got to do it for a longer period of time throughout the game. Um, but um, at the end of the day, you know, we can help each other, whether it's relievers or starters you know, about getting guys out and the approach to pitching.